Welcome to the Cuddler Report. We're here live at 7 p.m. Eastern and 4 p.m. Pacific. We begin tonight with breaking news from the White House. The National Association of Insurance Commissioners has just told President Obama that his fix for canceled health policies could result in higher premiums and gaps in coverage. Joining us now, Republican Congressman Brad Wenstrup, Bob Leshefsky, President of Health Policy and Strategy Associates, and Ovik Roy, Senior Fellow at the Manhattan Institute, author of How Medicaid Fails the Poor. You know, Ovik Roy, uh, come back to you, something the commissioners, the insurance commissioners said in their, I guess, a, p a printed, published release, that premiums are going to go up. Now, it sounded to me, I don't know, you have to give me the details. In other words, renewal premiums will go up or just premiums in general are going up, both contradict the president who keeps maintaining that premiums are going down. Which is it, Ovid? Well, premiums are going up both for people who are going to renew their old policies. The early rep reports we're hearing is about 20 to 25 percent increases mm -hmm. on the same plan that's being that was supposed to be canceled, but is going to be able to be continued. Premiums are going to have to go up. That's not their rates aren't going to go up this year because those rates are set. But if if help people stay out of those exchanges, then if you have older and sicker people, then premiums will go up there. And let's not forget the rest of America, the people who get employer-sponsored coverage, they're going to see increases of 10, 15, 20 percent, depending on where they live. So In good faith, okay, forget politics for a minute, Republicans versus Democrats. Just last question on this. How can you not extend all these deadlines for the good of the people who want to renew their insurance or the other people who want to sign up. Do you see what I'm saying? The problem, Larry, is that politics does intervene because the administration launched this website. We just learned from the House Oversight Committee, they disclosed some documents today, an email chain that showed that they knew people not being able to, to log into the website days before they launched it, and they still launched it because they were so afraid of the criticism they'd get if they had to eat crow and delay the website, well, which is crazy. Like they're eating a lot of crow right but now. But if this thing isn't fixed, it gets back to what Avik just said on October 1, and they set in, 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 in a place a domino effect, and the dominoes are still falling, and the, the right. congressman can't stop it, the insurance companies can't stop it. it. This is a mess. And the more we learn, the more we learn, the worse it is. Well, everybody right. knows the Obama administration is being hammered for all the difficulties with Obamacare and its rollout from the website to the dislocation of some people who are losing their plans. So the White House decided today to try to push back by playing on one of the favorable trends in health care, and that is the slowdown nationally in health care costs. Now, that's been going on for several years. There's a lot of debate over whether it's about the slowdown in economic activity or actual changes in the health care system. But Jason Furman, the chair of the Council of Economic Advisors, put out a report today in which he took at least partial credit for reforms in the Affordable Care Act driving down those costs. Now, here's some of the headline numbers about cost uh, growth slowdown. First of all, for the last three years, Healthcare spending per capita has risen only at 1.3% a year beyond inflation. That's the slowest three-year period in the last 50 years uh, and is something that has persisted even after the economy has recovered. Healthcare price inflation, that is the cost of health care services, is now going up on a year-to-year -year basis, according to this report, only by 1% year over year. And the benefits of that flow not just to American corporations and individuals but also to the government because according to the Congressional Budget Office the spending on Medicare and Medicaid by 2020 will be 10 percent less if this cost growth slowdown persists. Now everybody is waiting to see whether in fact if the economy grows more robustly it's going to uh, wipe out some of these effects but for now the administration points to things like changes in reimbursement rates hospital readmission penalties to make sure that providers are providing care more efficiently, accountable care organizations, all sorts of reforms that potentially could slow health care costs over the long run. And that's something the administration wants to point to. We'll see how long it lasts. I think some people say the slowdown in health care costs, whichever number you use, Jason Furman's number or the uh, Washington Post number, is a function of the recession, 
of fewer people who have insurance and fewer people going to the doctor, Ovik, that it really was more economic round. I've covered this topic extensively on my Forbes blog, and I can tell you, Larry, it's a good thing that there's been some slowdown in health cost growth, but it's economic and statistical hucksterism to, to credit Obamacare for this. There are two issues that you've alluded to. The first is the recession, which has slowed down health care spending across the developed world, not just the United States, but also in Europe, Japan, everywhere. There's been a dramatic increase increase in the use of high deductible insurance and health savings accounts, particularly among employer-based plans. Those are the two biggest drivers of the slowdown. The vast majority of Obamacare goes into effect in 2014. These things like ACOs and some of the other things that John Harwood was mentioning, they're tiny, tiny tinkerings around the edges. They have no significant impact on health spending. The warnings are growing louder about what looks like a second wave of health insurance cancellations, all due to Obamacare. Now, this wave could be much worse than the individual wave. We're talking as many as 100 million employer-based plans that are in jeopardy. Oh, look, why don't at least the bigger employers do what I read weeks ago that Walgreen is doing? Walgreen is sort of redoing their plan. They're giving a lump sum to their employees who can then take that money and either put it in some kind of savings account, maybe maybe an HSA, or just go and shop around for the private exchanges, the non-Obamacare exchanges that has more choice and more options. Now, is that what large corporations are going to do, or is that just a small drop in the bucket? Yeah, so what we're going to see is on the small employer end, people are going to move to part-time work to avoid uh, the employer mandate. On the large employer end, you're going to see substantial migration over time to these private exchanges because it's a way for large companies uh, to protect uh, their costs and gives cost certainty because they know what they're budgeting for health insurance costs every year. And you're going to see a lot of mid-sized companies start to self-insure so they can take advantage of the regulatory scheme that the large businesses are doing through these private exchange. See, so that's where things are going to go. But one point I want to make, Larry, is in general, it'll be a good thing if more people shop for coverage on their own instead of getting it from their employer. That would be a more market-oriented system. It'd be more efficient, and it would probably be cheaper.